Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, Tina. Miss Annie, good morning. Miss Brownie, good morning. Miss Rosie, good morning. Sister Holyfield, good morning. Randa, good morning. Kenyatta, good morning. What's up, y'all? Miss Francis, good morning. Deja, good morning. Gaines, good morning. <coughs> y'all pray for me already, cause it never fails. Every time I come on, my throat gets scratchy. Marcia, good morning. <clears throat> Becky, good morning. Cousin Linda, good morning. Griffin, good morning. Miss Ella, good morning. Althea, good morning. Mama Carlene, good morning. Ba -da -ba, da -da -da. Good morning, good morning. Ronnie, good morning. Cousin WF, good morning. Sister Mary Barnes, good morning. Sister Stovall, good morning. Newt, good morning. <clears throat> Jeremy, good morning. Miss Kiki, good morning. Rochelle, good morning. Rhonda, good morning. Sister May Williams, good morning. <clears throat> good morning, little Greek. How's everybody morning? Cousin Lee, good morning. Natasha, good morning. Reed, what's happening? Sister Alice, good morning. Tamika, good morning. Misa, good morning. Make that money, cousin Linda. Make that morning. Money. <laughs> Miss Rhonda, good morning. Da -ba -da -ba -ba. Hope everybody had a good night's rest. Thank y'all so much for joining me on this morning for Sunday morning word. Amen. And we are so thankful that God gave us again another day. For Eric, good morning. Sister Patricia, good morning. Ross, what's going on, partner? All right, there is a word, Miss Sivy. There's a word. Bro, Bro Smitty, good morning. Letitia, good morning. Hope you and the young ladies are doing good. Miss Gladys, how you doing? I miss you so much, Miss Gladys. Sister Belinda, good morning. 
Sister Terry, good morning. Sister Jean, hello. <clears throat> good morning, Sister Katrina. Sister Mir, good morning. Good morning. Got one more minute and we're going to press on. Hey, Mona, good morning. But I know you. But Toby, good morning. But still, Brian, what's happening, brother? Miss Beverly, good morning. And good morning to the young girl, the, the young ladies. Uncle brother love y'all. <laughs> Newt, but stand for good morning, man. Tristan, good morning. All right, it is now the 10 o'clock hour. Good morning, Miss Sherry. Good morning, Miss Terry. Hey, I hope everybody had a beautiful and a restful night. And I hope your morning has gotten off to an awesome, awesome morning. Good morning, Cousin Jardine. Good morning, Joy Maria, uh, JC Prestiana. Good morning. Sister Sherry Tate, good morning. Sister Beverly Boo, good morning. Gaines family, good morning. Jennifer, Sister Jennifer, good morning. London, good morning. All right. Again, I hope everybody had a, had a restful night and, and I'm so glad to see you all on this morning. Thank you all for always being uh, committed to uh, joining me on Sunday mornings for a word from the Lord. I do not take it lightly. Um, you could be listening to someone else and that's fine but you chose to worship with us. And for that, I am humble and I am, I am grateful. Um, as we move through uh, the rest of this, this month and this year, I do want y'all to understand and know that, um, you know, at this particular point, uh, nobody should have to tell you to praise God. I'm preaching already. When you think where you could be, where you should be, and where God has gotten you, you should already be saying, Lord, I thank you. Now, before we even get into the word, let's, let's just set the atmosphere. Do I have any thankful folks out there today that just can say, Lord, I thank you. I know where I could be. I know where I should be. But because of you, I am where I am. And Lord, I thank you. Come on, y'all. Let's, let's go ahead and start it. Amen. Lord, I thank you. Amen. Those that's coming in, good morning, y'all. Amen. Lord, I thank you. Tragedies are commonplace. A kind of disease as people are slipping away. Economies down, people can't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can somebody just say that? Lord, I thank you for all that you've done for me. Folks with our homes living out in the street and the drug habit, some say they just can't be. Muggers and robbers, no place seem to be safe. But you've been my protection every step of the way. And I wanna say, Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Yeah, yeah. Amen. So even in the midst of all of that, I can say thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. You've been so good. Come on, somebody. You've been so good, Lord, you've been so good. I just want to thank you, Lord, you made a way, you made away Lord you made away I just want to thank you Lord one more thing you brought me out did he bring anybody Lord you brought me out you brought me out. I just want to thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for this awesome day. Thank you for your many blessings that you've given. Thank you, Lord, for last night's rest, and thank you for our early rising on this Sunday morning. Thank you, Lord, that we made the wake-up list once again. Thank you, Lord, that we had food to eat, water, a roof over our head, clothes in the closet. God, we thank you for supplying all of our basic needs. And God, just because you're so good, sometimes you give us those things that we desire and that we want. And God, we thank you. Thank you for another Sunday morning, God, that you have given to us to hear your word. I pray now, God, that markets will decrease and you will increase. I pray, Father, that you will use us today in this online service, God, that somebody today will be helped, somebody will be saved, and somebody will even be delivered. And God, we pray, as we always do, till the soul of our hearts, that your word may fall on good ground, God, that it may bring forth the harvest. And God, teach us to not just be hearers only, but to be doers as well. And God, I just pray for your Holy Spirit, God, to have this way. I pray every home that's represented on this feed, God, that you would bless in an awesome, awesome way. God, we can't do nothing without you. And God, I pray that you would now touch my voice. God, that I may speak a word in this season. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Again, good morning to all of those who just come in. Our scripture today will be from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37 and verse 11. Amen. Ezekiel, chapter 37 and verse 11. And I will be reading from the New Living Translation. Somebody go ahead and type that on the screen. Ezekiel. Amen. I get it. Amen. I just typed it on the screen. Ezekiel 37 and verse 11. I'm reading from the New Living uh, Translation. And it says this. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people, the people of Israel. They are saying we have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Let me read that again. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying we have become old dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. I want to talk today from the subject, amen, facing dry bones, dry bones situations. Amen facing 
dry bones situations. Amen. Has there ever been a time in your life when you just didn't care anymore? Amen. You, you might have lost your energy, your excitement for life. There are times that even the strongest believer will throw up their hands in defeat and overwhelming odds. Y'all come on, go with me. These are times when the chance of victory seems slim as the forces uh, against us, amen, continue to zap power that we need to fight the battle. Amen. At such time, when time, when we face those times, amen, we, we are likely to throw up our hands and we'll begin to lose all hope. Amen. Talk to me. Just like a helium balloon, amen, a helium, like a helium filled balloon that gradually loses air. A person who once floated on high inspiration and high motivation can gradually descend to an untimely landing. Y'all going to get it in a minute. Amen. In the workplace, in school, at homes, and even in the church, there are millions of people who seem to have lost their will to go forward or to pursue a course they once felt driven to follow. For all practical purposes, such people are dead to the cause they once held dear. Y'all going to get it in a minute. Even our society, y'all talk to me. In general, it's beginning a re to reflect deathless sy symptoms. Y'all going to get it. There appears to be a decline in godly uh, family values. Come on, talk to me. And even the morality in general, those truths we once held dear have now degenerated for the most part into just a mere shell of what was once important. What are you talking about? How dead is society? Can, can I take my time and tell you? Just a casual review of to show our culture has distanced itself to, from, from what we once believed to be true. We know our society, watch this, is declining when we see teenagers deliver babies and then leave them in a dumpster. Y'all ain't talking to me here. We, we, we know our society, y'all gonna have to pray with me on this one. We, we know our society is declining when we see black women described by black men and call themselves hoes, y'all ain't talking to me, and nobody gets angry. I'm preaching, Marcus, preach, Marcus. We protect doctors who murder babies in mother's wombs and then prosecute men who kill animals. Y'all ain't talking to me here. Some of the most beautiful girls are becoming lovers of other girls while some of the most handsome men are holding hands with other men. Y'all ain't helping me here. Many youth praise the Holy Master on Sunday then pay tribute to another master uh, that rem the remainder, remainder of the week. Remainder of the week, y'all ain't helping me here. Yet sometimes parents frustrated over the failure of their children to excel in school even give up hope. I know it's it, we're in a whole new season now where most most kids are now are doing virtual learning. Y'all y'all talk to me in here. A amen. And sometimes parents are getting frustrated because of, of their children's failure uh, to excel. And uh, marriage partners struggle in unresponsive relationships. Y'all ain't talking to me. Often dismiss their union as beyond repair and settle for divorce. Schools, Lord have mercy, completely dismiss some students uh, as beyond hope and expel them. Society will write off those same children and lock them away in detention centers. Y'all ain't talking to me. For the rest of their lives, educators feel frustrated when even their best efforts to revive test scores and student performance result in dismissal. dismissal. Whenever a person or a society as, as, as a whole loses hope, y'all talk to me, it loses the breath that keeps them living and afloat. They, they diminish to a state similar to that of dry bones. I'm coming to you. They're lifeless. Their, their daily activity is minimized to simply getting through another day. Is there hope for our generation? Y'all talk to me. Is it beyond saving if a person reaches such an all-time low, can he or she be revived? I'm talking here. Can she be motivated? Can he be motivated to rise up and live again? Is there any hope for the next generation? 
as believers, y'all talk to me, we are convinced that the word of God provides the answer to all of life's dilemma. Y'all talk to me. We know that if we hear the word of the Lord and then not only hear it, but act on it, his word shall provide breath, y'all. Hey, listen to me, of inspiration we need to continue despite all the obstacles that we face. Are y'all in here with me? Yes, yes, yes. This text today focuses on Ezekiel as he gives a message of hope to the people of Israel. Y'all stay with me. This text, watch this, is best understood in the context of his historic background. This text, I've got to give you the history, was written during the, a period when the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar had invaded Judah the second time to put down a rebellion by King Jehoiakim. But, but King Jehoiakim had died or he was killed and his son Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat who, ruled, who had ruled only eight months was taken into captive to Babylon. Y'all gonna get it. The Babylonian king took Israel's youngest, brightest, and most talented men and women back to Babylon. Among the 10,000 prominent leaders, soldiers, craftsmen, and scholars, amen, was a man, a prophet named Ezekiel, who was then 25 years old and in training to become priest. Ezekiel settled in his own house in a village near Nippur along the river of Shabar in Babylonia. He prophesied, watch this, for at least 22 years. Y'all gonna get it. Not only were the Israelites reduced to second-class citizens in a foreign land, but they felt isolated. They felt cut off from the God of their ancestors. Yahweh, God of their people, had given their ancestor good land that was flowing with milk and honey and had always been available to them. Now their land, watch this, has been devastated and they have been torn away from it. Their, their temple had been destroyed. Its wealth had been removed and hauled off unto distant land. Y'all going to get it? The people of Israel felt lost. They felt forsaken and they felt desperate. In other words, they said, our bones are dried up. Our hope is lost and we are cut off completely. Even the young men, like those in Ezekiel age bracket, had lost hope. They gave up trying. Y'all gonna get it. Then God gave Ezekiel another vision. Lord have mercy. He gave, he gave Ezekiel another vision of which, amen, it was a vision of dry bones in the valley. This vision showed the people of Israel who had been scattered into different lands, that their spirit of national unity had reached an all-time low. Sounds like America, don't it? Their people were in Assyria, Judea, Babylon, and other places. They gave up hope of ever seeing their homeland again. For many, that, that feeling of hopelessness translated into a feeling of personal defeat. Known for people, known for being a people of great excitement and inspiration, the Bible says they hungered their hearts on willow tree and asked the question, how can we sing Zion songs in a strange land? Are y'all on here with me? Yeah, Ezekiel's vision portrayed a people completely Amen. Restored, fully alive and, and, and living for God once they decided to hear God's word and watch this, abide by God's word. There are many today who are, who are facing dry bone situations and you're facing them on a daily basis. You face them and, and it seems as if all hope is gone and you become frustrated. How do you face, how do we face the dry bones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, 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 what situations are we facing? Well, number one, we have dry bone students. Uh, you're gonna, you're about to understand what I'm talking about. You, you will not understand how to live the Christian life unless you're in God's word. God's word has a solution 
to any problem that you might face. But see, you got to be a student of the word, but we don't have a lot of students of the word. Therefore, you're a dry bone student. Y'all ain't talking to me here. You, you, if you don't read and discover these truths, you will find, you will not be able to find any solution to your problem. Look, you will become nervous and fearful. You will begin to think uh, about all the what ifs of life. What, what, what if I can't pay my bill? What, what if my spouse leaves me? What, what if I get cancer? Isaiah 26 and 3 said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Y'all ain't talking to me. If you don't, you, yeah, if you don't read the word, you will become, yeah, uh, spiritually malnourished. Getting into God's word in the morning time, watch this, will give you energy and everything you need to face the day. If you allow your mind to only feed on bad news that you see on television and you hear on the radio, you will become spiritually malnourished. Job 23, 12 said, neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than necessary food. Y'all y'all ain't getting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't get it, become a student of the word, you will be easily deceived and confused. I'm preaching, y'all. As you get into God's word and begin to understand his precept, you will begin to understand the false ways of the world. You will try to justify. You will not try to justify. Let me get it right. Sin by your own opinion. Y'all know. Y'all know I'm preaching but you will begin to see the consequences of sin through his word. Matthew 22, 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Y'all ain't hipping me here. If you don't become a student of the word, you will make wrong choices in life and be vulnerable to God's judgment. When you fail to read the word, you will not have the understanding to make the right choices for life. Hosea 4 and 6 says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Y'all ain't talking to me here. Yeah, 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 dry bone student. But Ezekiel asked a question. God asked Ezekiel a question. Uh, God asked him, say, Ezekiel, can the bone live? Uh, Ezekiel said, Lord, thou knowest. Y'all ain't talking to me. Yeah, but not only do you have dry bone students, look at this, you have dry bone relationships. There are millions of couples that are enduring what they feel a dry bone relationship, priest markers. These may be marriages or courtships that are only shells of what they once were. Sometimes some marriages have reached a point where there is little, if any, Communication between spouses. Y'all gonna get it in a minute. Many only share the same address, but they don't even sleep in the same part of the house. Priest markers. Some are just hanging on out of respect or for or uh, 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 benefit. Let me say it like that of the children. The, 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 these the, these are dry bone relationships. Yeah, that there are even dry bone courtship. These are relationships that are going nowhere. Y'all ain't talking to me. Partners are going in different direction and each is thoughtless of the feelings and the needs of others. Hurt feelings, jealousy, tears, and frustration are all hallmarks of such relationship. The principal still see each other but for all practical purpose, the relationship is dead. Y'all ain't talking to me. Can, relation, can these such relationships be salvaged? Can they live again? Can they enjoy the happiness? Can they, uh, can they find that companion that they once knew? And if, can any fire be rekindled, Lord have mercy, uh, in the relationship? Any fire can be rekindled? Let me answer the question. If there are a few coals that's left, y'all listen to me. Where there is love, somebody type it. Where there is love, there is hope. Why? Because in love, there is God. And because God is love. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only 
begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes, yes, if there's love, there's hope. Because 1 Corinthians 13, 7, put it this way, uh, that love beareth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. So we ask the question, can the bone live again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I came to answer, yes, they can live again if, somebody say if, they hear the word of God. But not only are there dry bone students, not only is there dry bone relationship, but look at this, there's, there's dry bone spirituality. There are so many folk today whose spirituality, watch this, has declined to meaningless rituals. Y'all about to get mad at me. Rituals are a part of ceremonial process. They involve singing hymns, reading scripture, standing here, sitting here. Y'all ain't talking to me. Standing here, sitting here at, at certain times during the service. Y'all ain't talking. Believers who have a deep sense of spirituality Watch this. They go beyond the ritual to find God. Y'all, y'all missing me here. They know him through their daily relationship with him. Do I have any witnesses on here? God is more than a meaningless tradition, but a living presence. Oh my goodness. Uh, they, they serve him best by letting him live through them. Y'all ain't talking to me. Believers who lose sight of the great commission to go teach, preach, and minister to the masses of the world lose their sense of divine mission and calling. Y'all ain't talking to me here. When that happens, the entire religious experience is reduced to a ritual. The, 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 there, there is a sense of mission in every kind act done yeah, in the name of the Lord. Y'all ain't talking to me. And let me just put a pin here. We coming up on the holiday seasons. Listen, do not go and do things for folks just to take a picture and post it to social media. Y'all ain't talking to me here. That ain't giving out of love. That's giving to be seen. But when you give out of love, watch this, and you give it from your heart and God is involved, you don't need a camera. Y'all ain't talking to me here because you remember what the Bible said, do, do unto others as you will have them to do unto you. Y'all ain't talking to me here. We need to learn how to give and do without being seen or wanting to be seen. Are y'all here with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so when you're absent from service, there is a decline in your spirituality. When you are absent from Bible study, Sunday school, there is a decline. Y'all ain't talking to me here. There is a decline in your spirituality. But the, the question was asked, can these bones live? Yes, they can live. If they hear the word, I'm, I'm giving, I'm, I'm moving, I'm, I'm, I'm done, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm about to wrap this up because I'm, I'm feeling my help right here. Finally, my brothers and sisters, we must remember that bones, even though they're dry, can live again. Ezekiel was asked whether the bones in the valley could live again. He, his response was, Lord, thou knowest. Despite his dismay at the miserable estate of the bones, Ezekiel knew that even dry bones can live again. Watch this, if empowered by the word of God. What was told to Ezekiel is that the people could be restored. Are y'all on here with me? If they repented and then heard the word of God. Oh my goodness. Devil trying to get into this, this screen, but I'm back now. Are y'all back with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. What was told to Ezekiel, watch this, is that the people could be restored if they repented and then heard the word of God and then acted on it. When they heard the word of the Lord, they were able 
to live again. Are y'all here with me? No matter how hopeless a situation appears, things change when God gets in the picture. Y'all need to talk to me right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. A family. Yeah, no matter, let me say it this way. Uh, when they hear the word of God, they're able to live again. When God gets in the picture, y'all talking to me, watch this. A family that seems to be on the verge of destruction changes when God gets in the picture. Y'all ain't talking to me. A relationship that's on the rocks, Lord have mercy, can come alive again when God gets in the picture. A relationship, Lord have mercy, that seem, all seem to be where all hope is gone can live again when God gets in the picture. A situation that seems beyond salvaging can be improved when God gets in the picture. Y'all ain't talking to me here. The key for the dry bones was to hear, let me close this thing, the word of the Lord. And my brothers and sisters, today the solution is still, oh ye dry bones. Yeah, hear the word of the Lord. Have I got a witness here? Are you looking for a fresh start? Yeah, and forgiveness from God. Yeah, all you need to do is hear the word of the Lord. Yeah, what does the word say? The word said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Do y'all hear me? Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and then heal the land. Have I got a witness here? Are you feeling alone? Yeah, if you are, you need to hear the word of the Lord. Yeah, the word says, and lo, I'll be with you always, even unto the end of the world. Have I got a witness here? Are you being plagued by difficulties in your past? Well, if you are, you need to hear the word of the Lord. Have I got a witness here? The word says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. I press, do I have any witness here? Towards the mark. Yeah, have I got a witness here? I'm closing y'all. Yeah, are you feeling dejected because of a lack of possession? Yeah, well, if you are, hear the word, preach markers. I, yeah, the word says, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Have I got a witness here? Yes, ain't God all right today? Yeah, all I'm saying is, you need to hear the word of the Lord. Have I got a witness here? Ain't he all right? Yes, I need you to hear, yeah, the word of the Lord. Have I got a witness here? Ain't he all right? Come on here. The devil trying to mess with it, y'all. He trying to freeze me up, but y'all need to come on, pray, saints, so we can get this word through. Ain't he all right? Yes. Have I got a witness here? If you can still hear me, come on and give me some hearts. If you can still see me, come on and give me some hearts. I'm not going to leave you until I give you this word that the Lord wants me to give you. Ain't he all right? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let's close this thing. Ain't he all right? The Bible said that the bones came together. Ain't he all right? And yeah, and the bones stood up. Yeah, like an arm. And the Lord said, what they need is my spirit. So the Lord called in the wind from the four corners of the world. And he breathed into them the breath of life. Ain't I got a witness here? Yes, I need somebody here that's on this feed today. I need you to prophesy to yourself. Lord have mercy. Put your hand 
on your head. Come on here. Put your hand on your head and say, I'm getting my mind back. Ain't he all right? Put your hand on your heart and say, I'm getting my heart back. Ain't he all right? Put your hand on your body and say, I command you in the name of Jesus to be healed. Come on, somebody. Put your hand on your pocket. Ain't he all right? And say, you shall have overflow. Huh? Ain't he all right? Huh? Come on here. Huh? Talk to me. Huh? Put your hand huh? on your ear huh? and say, faith huh? coming by hearing huh? and hearing huh? by the word of God. Huh? Ain't he all right? Huh? If you want to know huh? how huh? to handle huh? your situation, yeah, I need you to follow the instructions of what the Lord gave to Ezekiel. Ain't he all right? If you read that text, he told Ezekiel to put the word on some sticks. Ain't he all right? Three sticks are mentioned huh, in this text. Huh? There was a stick huh, for Judah. Huh? There was a stick huh, for Joseph. Huh? There was a stick huh, for Ephraim. Huh? Ain't he all right? Huh? But if you look at Calvary, huh, you'll see three crosses huh, that were made huh, from sticks. Huh? Ain't he all right? Huh? Ain't he good? Huh? The Bible said huh, there were three male factors. Huh? There was uh, yeah, but two male factors, huh? In other words, there were two thieves huh, on the cross. Huh? But can I change this thing here? Huh? Can I say you like I really see him? Huh? There were three thieves huh, on the cross. Huh? I know y'all looking at me. Huh? You're looking at me funny huh? because I said huh? there were three thieves huh, on the cross. Huh? Some of y'all about to take huh? my savior. Uh, ain't no thief, uh, but I beg to differ. Uh, yes, he is. Uh. Stay with me here. Huh? The first two thieves huh, stole money, huh? but the thief in the middle, huh? he stole huh? the power of sin. Huh? The thief in the middle huh? stole huh? the victory from the grave huh? and took the sting out of death. Huh? Slap yourself huh? a high five huh? and say he took it. Huh? Ain't he all right? Huh? He took my anxiety. Huh? Ain't he all right? Huh? He took my depression. Huh? Ain't he all right? Huh? He took my worries. Huh? Ain't he all right? Huh? He took my pain. Huh? Ain't he all right? Huh? He took my hurts. Huh? Ain't he all right? Huh? Somebody type it. Huh? He took it. He took it. He took it. Huh? Ain't he all right? Huh? And because he took it, huh? I shall huh, live again. Huh? Ain't he all right? Huh? How can you live again, Marcus? Huh? Because he took it. Huh? Ain't he all right? Huh? He took it. Huh? Ain't he all right? Huh? He took my place huh? and he died huh? on Calvary's cross. Huh? They put him in the grave. Huh? But early huh? Sunday morning, huh? he got up huh? with all power huh? in his hand. Huh? Do anybody know huh? he's got power? Power, huh? Ain't he all right? Huh? He's got all power huh? in his hand. Huh? And because huh? he's got power, huh? I shall huh? live again. Huh? I need somebody to type it. Huh? I shall not die, huh? but I shall huh? live. Huh? Come on, somebody. <laughs> Type it this morning. I shall not die, but I shall live. Ain't he all right? Shout yes. I shall live. Come on, somebody. Shout yes. I shall live. Ain't he all right? He's all right. He's all right. He took it. 
he took it. Listen, the devil is busy. He don't want y'all to get this word, but I pray and hope that it come through because you shall live again if you hear the word and you take heed to the word. Lord have mercy. You shall live again. And because he took it, Lord have mercy, because he got up, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. That's a word for somebody. Because he lives, I shall live. Father, thank you for this word today. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for reminding us that even though we may be in a season of dry, of dry bone or dry situations, God, we can live again if we hear your word and take heed to your word. I pray, God, you bless every person that heard this word, heard this word, and God, that they will fall on good soul. Bless them, God, to have an awesome day, the rest of the day, and let them have an awesome week. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless y'all. God keep you. I know the song was saying that the screen froze. I hope it came through. But thank y'all so much for being on here. I love y'all. Y'all be safe. And until we meet again, I pray for you. You pray for me. And we'll watch God change things. God bless you.